Uh, we will end this uh, module by zooming in on one particular case study where everything comes together and we can highlight uh, the value and the benefits of location data and technologies. So the case study is about flood risk mapping. Um, okay, let's go into uh, flood risk mapping. Uh, in fact, the first element to raise is that uh, flood risk ma mapping is not done only by experts, but many stakeholders are involved. Uh, scientists are involved uh, for scientific modeling, but also policy making, governments, administrations are involved. And it's coming back also when services are delivered to uh, citizens, for example, a building permit, then you need this type of mapping and information uh, to get, uh, well, to make decisions uh, to generate a building permit or not. But also private sector is involved, insurance, banking, to provide a loan or not, and to provide particular insurance um, um, products. Uh, the scientists, what are they doing? They contribute by uh, uh, contributing their knowledge and their skills related to not only the modeling, but to the interpretation of the data. Before you come up with a, so, uh, a flood risk map, you need to understand the, the data, bring the data together, analyze the data, etc. So this will result in scientists will also, of course, use the data, but will contribute to the creation of the risk flood maps. Uh, also, government and administrations will uh, be involved in the sense that they are user, but at the same time also contributing to uh, the mapping in the sense that you need or you might need to decide on uh, uh, having priority areas for water, for flooding, uh, kind of buffer areas. That's a political decision. decision. Of course, citizens, uh, specific business like farmers are, are also interested in this type of information, but might be also involved in um, the decision making on uh, these buffer areas, for example. Uh, farmers are involved because their practice have or might have an influence on the, the risks, etc. cetera. Uh, and the citizens and the farmers are, of course, also takers, users of this type of information. And the same for insurance companies or banking, banking sector, uh, they need this type of information to take decisions. So it's a, a multi-stakeholder contributing to the mapping, but also uh, uh, using uh, the results of this mapping. So it's in two directions, uh, in fact. And the risk mapping itself is quite a complex affair. So the hydrological uh, uh, system, the water flow, the bigger picture is that this is uh, involving or impacted by the hydrology, the digital terrain model, by the underground, the soil and the geology, by the weather, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many things intervening. And this also means that uh, for uh, doing uh, uh, flood uh, risk mapping, you need uh, diverse data and diverse uh, location technologies. Um, uh, as I said, uh, it's not one data set, uh, but you need different types of data to combine them and then to bring them together to create at the end a more simplified uh, risk map. Uh, what is also interesting is that it's not only uh, requiring uh, diverse data and technologies, but also it's related to uh, different policy and decision-making procedures and processes. Uh, here uh, in the blue box, you only see the European directives that are directly impacting what uh, we do with this uh, flood risk mapping. The, there is a specific floods directive, there is the water framework directive, but there is also a European system called the water information system that collects information from member states on the water system, in fact. Uh, there is the soil strategy, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things are coming together. And that is just to indicate that it, it is a kind of complex process involving many stakeholders, many diverse data and technologies to be able to collect the data, to process the data, et cetera. So uh, if we look at the dynamic process, this complex process, uh, we can look at a kind of multiple lane uh, sub-processes. First is uh, soil and water scientists that will 
select based on, for example, soil maps, uh, those zones that are vulnerable uh, from the natural perspective, if there would be no dikes, etc., what would the water do? So this will end in what we call natural flood areas. Uh, and this is based on the digital terrain model on the soil mapping, etc. Uh, other scientists, water scientists, uh, water modelers, uh, they will use uh, more advanced algorithms and models using uh, weather data, using digital drain models, using the soils, etc. Uh, and the hydraulic system, this engineering part with the dikes and, and the systems, the sewer systems, etc., to model what will happen with the water in case of, for example, extreme weather uh, conditions, extreme rainfall, for example. And also this will then result in multiple because you can model at different uh, moments in time in multiple modeled flood areas, uh, a separate map, let's say. Um, but you can also just monitoring what is happening and their government is coming in, uh, uh, monitoring, monitor, monitoring the floods, deciding also uh, making decisions, uh, but monitoring the floods, uh, can be done in different ways. You can use imagery from satellites, you can use helicopters, you can use drones, you observe and you create the real flood areas. And that can be uh, expanded with information coming from citizen, for example. Uh, for example, a citizen might uh, inform government or a municipality of uh, observed flood in the neighborhood. Uh, that will um, of course, not use uh, drones, but rather be in other ways, but at least end up in the uh, also in the same database. Uh, and then you have um, decision making because you uh, room for water, for example, in Flanders, we call it room for water as an integrated water policy means that you will give up certain areas uh, as a priority area for in case of flooding, you open it, and that's the place where uh, water will uh, appear. Uh, but in making the decision, uh, they might, and they are involving citizens because it can have an impact on your house or your neighborhood, etc. Also, farmers are usually involved in official meetings using location data and technologies. And these decisions on these particular uh, areas are the so-called buffer flood areas or the, we call it policy making or uh, uh, decision making uh, flood areas you decide that this is priority for water and all these elements are coming together and that will be combined using location technologies to create a flood risk area map that is then uh, given to the insurance sector to generate or to transfer it to an insurance flood risk area. In practice, it, there is a legislation for that. You add 75 and distract 75 centimeter to have a kind of additional buffer. And this information is then used uh, by the insurance and banking uh, sector to decide on insurances, on loans, etc. So they use these data daily and it's a derived data set or location data from the flood risk area, which is more uh, used by governments and citizens. So for example, a citizen wants to move to a certain uh, place, uh, buy a new house or build a new house. So we'll uh, look to the cadastral parcels, the addresses, buildings, but also they need to have a permit, a building permit in case of a new house. Uh, so they interact with someone of the municipality but the people of the municipality will also look into these flood risk areas and to the other information, combine it, and then uh, eventually have a decision on whether you get the building permit or not. So you see it's a complex process of creating and maintaining the data, but also the way it's used by the different uh, stakeholders is quite different. So it's a dynamic process. And in this uh, last uh, slide, you see the result of that, uh, at least integrated flood risk map. So uh, the big database, not the insurance map that is derived, where uh, that can be used then in turn, by example, for example, by uh, youngsters in schools 
in some of the courses, some of the lessons they have uh, to evaluate whether their own house is, is in such or close to such a, a risk area. And this is a good example to uh, see uh, this case study demonstrates, in fact, uh, the multi-stakeholder uh, uh, efforts that is required to develop such a multi-layer foot risk map a flood risk map and, and that you combine in some cases really many different location data and technologies to get answers on particular questions such as can we provide a building permit for this parcel is it not prone to to flooding or too prone to flooding that might change so uh, it shows that uh, the same data and the same uh, technologies then can also be used for multiple purposes by public authorities, but not only uh, by the citizens, but also public authorities, by private sector, by businesses, such as in this case, uh, insurance and banking. And with that, um, this um, case study comes to an end and also module uh, two.